much, Jenny. Thanks for joining us live out here at Shakespeare. Can we have a full house? How is everyone? Yeah. <laughs> they are lively. Let me tell you, my friends. We're, of course, at Shakespeare & Co. in Hamburg. We're out here every month having a chat. I love this place. We it, love coming It's gorgeous, home. the food's delicious, and I'll tell you, the company's pretty great, too. Oh, the I company so. is pretty good. <laughs> we like that. Also, I think the chef's going to come out and give us one of his favourite little dishes. Oh, mm. As well, he said to me, we've got a brand new chef here at Shakespeare & Co. We're going to have a quick little word with him when he comes out. And I think, I don't know what it is, but all I can see is we have a knife and a fork. Yes. <laughs> we are ready. And I like we are being ready. surprised. I love being surprised. Do you guys that? Yes, because I do. I, I can eat anything. Oh, honestly. we know that. As long as you don't have to cook it. Oh, here we go. Oh, my gosh. Hips. All right. <gasps> Look at this. Ooh. Oh, my what? gosh. Let oh me get gosh. this out Let's of the way. Let's bring out the chef. Come on out here. Oh, wow. Okay. Can you all really Come see out this? With me. Here we are. Oh, my oh. gosh. You know that Chef Jonathan is from Maysville, wow. my hometown. No, I don't know. Hello, yeah. Chef Jonathan. How are you? You're doing great yourself. Okay, I want to ask you, what have you bought out to begin? This looks scrumptious. Uh, uh, from, from your right, we have a ham and cheese crepe, mm. a lemon nice. sugar crepe, and a chocolate hazelnut crepe with bananas and strawberries. Now, you're one of the brand new chefs here, um, taking on the lead role. That's correct. What are you looking forward to most about putting your signature on? Uh, just as the brand as a whole, making sure that uh, we move forward and we're providing great food to the guests and making return customers. That's what we like to hear. Thank Absolutely. you, Jonathan. We're going to taste more of your food in the next coming weeks as well. Great. Good luck. We How look forward to having you. Here? Uh, this makes the start of my third week. Third week, everyone. Love Come it. on out. <laughs> Thank you, my Thank friend. You very Enjoy. Much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, let's start off. Well, you didn't need anything. Well, I mean, I'll try it. All right. Yeah. How about nice. you start trying that while I start yes. on with the show? How Tell me that about sound? the show. Yes, All right, now, this is something interesting for you, David. Considering that you're about to be married and could consider maybe having babies. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't move No, so that's good. fine. Just to eat while <laughs> I talk about it. Men could be taking birth control over the next year or so. There's a new study coming out that it is the way to go that women no longer have to worry about the contraception anymore, that men should be doing it as well. As a result, they're saying that it does actually work. 83 men, and this came from the Washi University of Washington in Seattle, and they tested the pill, okay? Oh, at three different doses on 83 men, aged between 18 and 50, and they took it for 28 days once with food and gave blood samples for testing. Now, it worked. Here's the question. Lisa, yes? do you think Mr. Doug would be the one that would take the pill? <laughs> <laughs> he would maybe take it once. If it's a daily, is it? A, did you say daily, it's a daily? Daily for 28 one? days. Not going to happen. That really? I, I do not trust that men would be able to stay with that Every day. David can't even remember <laughs> what he's doing. Seriously. Listen, this, is, this is a great point, Lisa. My biggest concern, first of all, was that crepe was delicious. I know, oh, really? seriously. It is so good. It's so good. But on this whole note, I would definitely do this. Brandy wanted me to get on the pill. But I just, I don't trust myself. I, I feel like I would forget, and that could become a very big, well, at this point, we'd be like, well, even you, you know. <laughs> even you saying it doesn't sound right. <laughs> I'm ready. Get me Can the I pill. Can I say that to you? <laughs> yeah. I just like if Brandy wants me to take the pill. <laughs> I don't know. Tell us what you think. But look, I don't think men can be trusted to take the pill. No, no. To be honest with you. <laughs> I agree. I, it would definitely, you're right. Doug and I, we'd be, both be there. We already have ADD as it is, <laughs> and I would totally forget. So yeah. Okay, well, tell us what you think. Head over to Midday Kentucky's Facebook page and tell us whether you or your man could be trusted to take the pill. <laughs> And whether no. you would want to leave it up to him, let me tell you. Nope. I think it's safer for the women to take care mm -hmm. of this. Not being sexist at all, but I agree. It's Lisa, safer. I want to try that. It looks amazing. Don't go swapping over okay. my table so here. At some good. point, yeah. save yeah. me a bite. Okay. Hey, there's I'll a new try. study that also came out, Lisa, I thought about you. Uh -huh. um, that um, elementary school, they're thinking doing homework after hours is way too much. They're okay. saying that on average, eight hours of schoolwork throughout throughout the week after hours is way too much yes I agree actually what, what do your kids do well um Right now, this year, it's a little bit different. Um, Harrison has a little bit of work. He might do maybe about 30 minutes to 40 minutes of homework a night is about what he's averaging right now. Right. But I remember when we were at another school with Jack, it would take about two hours a night 
to do his homework. Now, granted, he was special needs with the autism. Yeah. It took a little bit longer, but still, there was a lot of work that needed to be done. So I think there, I think the schools need to strike a balance. I would yeah. say, um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's a lot. You know, I wish, that, I just want the kids to be well, able to relax. Well, I'm just starting to think I can't remember doing an awful amount of homework at, mm. at school. Mm -hmm. I know when I was at boarding school, that was what we had to do. Yeah. Um, but through. Um, primary school, maybe we didn't, I just didn't do anything, hence why I, you know, didn't go to college and was quite stupid, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Joy, what's, what's the average? Kids are doing like, what'd you eight say? Eight hours a week. Eight hours a week? Now, they, they go to school for eight hours a day. Right. right. And they're averaging eight hours a week so of it's about school. Hour, it's hour and, an and a half. half an yeah. hour and a half at night. Yeah. I don't really feel like that's too much. Really? Yeah, but at the same time, I'm not having to conduct it and make yeah. sure it gets done. And that kind of leads into how much work you have to put exactly. in. Exactly. And that's the difference. You know, as the kids get older, if they're in high school, I could see we're an hour and a half a night. That's, right. I think that's justifiable. But when you're getting at an, at an elementary level, I mean, and you have multiple children that oh, are yeah. in that age bracket, I mean, it's taking up a lot of your evenings yeah. every single evening. So, you know, and it's not only about the parents or about, you know, you know, my time restraints, but it just, it seems like it's an awful long time for those kids to be seated and doing work, school work I got like you. that. I want them, you know, I want them learning in other ways too. I want them outside adventuring and things like that. It doesn't leave a lot of time for that, especially in the winter time when your daylight hours are short. Right. Yeah, look, I don't no, I think kids should be able to just do whatever they want to do. I think it's nice that they should have some expectations when yeah. you're laughing at. Uh, I just love to, I think kids can do whatever they want to do. And it's, but well, I they do, do anyway, don't they? It's Pretty true. much. It's true. Well, I, I do think, Lisa... I don't think it's that important through primary school. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. You know, as you get older, it does need to hit that increase. Maybe that eighth grade level, yeah. sixth grade. Yeah. In yeah. there. I think maybe the last year of primary school, you mm -hmm. sort of start training them into it. Mm -hmm. But you know, they've been at school for eight hours, people. Let them have a break. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Tell us what you think. Head over to Midday Kentucky's Facebook <laughs> page. And whether you think eight hours a week is actually too much. Ah, uh, David, uh, this is some. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this leads into that conversation. These conversations. There we go. Now, this is perfect because it's the mothers that are normally making the kids do homework. Right. And you're saying if there's a the study came out or an or, um, article saying that mothers, it's two and a half jobs yeah. that they do? Basically, you know, I've really experienced this with uh, our new nurse practitioner. She is a full-time mom also, two kids, and it kind of blows me away with how much she's working both at the office, but then when she goes home, she's with her kids doing things like homework, mm -hmm. and she starts so early. So they say that the average person, mother, or taking that role on because a lot of dads do it too. Well, that's working, your main goal. Well, true. That's your goal in life. <laughs> it's true. Okay, I'm ready for it. But they're working 98 hours a week. Uh, they're starting an average of 628. Instead of a normal 9 to 5 job, well, they're saying that being a mother correct. is 98 hours a week. Correct. But they also include some of those mothers are working part-time or full-time jobs also, which oh, okay. goes even to more. Right. But the average of just doing the stay-at-home mom position is 98 hours like you were saying Troy oh, Lord. so it's just that you know we don't think about like the and half of them don't get paid oh yeah and dad dad doesn't give them an allowance mm -hmm. no no it's it's very much like okay get up get ready um, let me take you to school or mm -hmm. it's taking you to events after then coming home getting meals ready mm -hmm. and it just gets to be a lot but it I got it. What do you think? Yeah, I think, I mean, 98 hours, though. I never really thought about it in those terms. Right. So, But you, you wouldn't to spend that? 98 hours because you don't cook. Yeah, so, I do. Oh. Especially when I'm a stay-at-home mom. Boom. You know? So that's... When do you cook? Um, I cook for breakfast. I cook for dinner. <laughs> Once in a great while. Just, yeah. Let's be, let's be honest. <laughs> Once in a great while. <laughs> Well, you, well, you know, cook breakfast on Sunday. You know yes, where exactly. to take him, Shakespeare. So, but you know, yeah, exactly. But, but here's yeah. the real thing: is what that are they saying? What are they saying is what are the things that are holding the mothers together? Right. Coffee's number one. <laughs> okay, iPads are number two. Netflix. Well, they can't be working if they're on the iPad. No, yeah, no, well, no, 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 no. The kids. It puts the kids the on. The kids are on the oh, iPad. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of their Obviously saving grace. Obviously, they have children. <laughs> But it is, it's just one of those things where it's, you know, we got Mother's Day coming up soon. Make it special because moms are working hard out there. That's yeah. right, David. I, I like that topic. All right. <laughs> well, speaking of that, maybe you should also send, if it's the woman of the house, to a woman's only island. Lisa, what? <laughs> 
This was crazy. Can we send you? Oh, yeah, please do. Okay, so this very wealthy woman, her name's Christina Roth. She owns a, she has a blog that's called Super She. And it's Super to help. Super She? Super She. And what it's called, why she has it is to help bring women together um, that are in business or, you know, that are striving to do more in life. They're yeah. trying to network women together. Well, what she did was she bought a private island off of the coast of Finland. And it's for women only, and she wanted them to be able to connect um, together. And it, it only allows 10 people on the island at a time. Well, not so, that many people. Right, exactly. There's four luxurious. I think there's a lot of secret women's business going on, <laughs> and that's that's what we say no, in Australia. It is, it you is, know, that's a, 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 the Aboriginals. Yes. As the women get together, and they call it the secret women's business. Oh well. Yeah, women only. Well, this is definitely. Women so what are only. they doing there? They are trying to connect. They have wellness centers. And, and things that they can do um, for themselves and then also just trying to connect the women together um, and it's it's kind of like if you have women that are in high positions maybe some that are in a little bit lower position mm. you're gonna average out in the middle which is a great place to be if you're you know if you're especially if you're at the lower end you, they want to yeah. try to help make women kind of push you empower yes them. and empower so you're you. paying to go to the island yes exactly She's making so, money out of it. Smart she lady. is so it sleeps 10 people in four luxurious cabins, and th the price, they didn't say what the price was, yeah. but... I can tell you, honey, it's <laughs> yeah, going to be gonna like 10000 a head <laughs> well, for the, a week. And the Agree? thing is... Oh, yeah, it, if that. It, at least, I'm sure. But the thing is, is that um, there's a lot of naysayers and, you know, people out there that don't like it too much because what they're saying is the women have to be vetted through the uh, organization's website, and so it sounds very elitist. Well, I was going to say, it doesn't sound like they're bringing women together. Exactly. That if you've got the money, exactly. you can come, but... Exactly, exactly, and that's where, you know, it kind of, you feel like... Well, I think know? that's a bit, I think that's a little mean that they shouldn't actually do that. Yeah. Like, if you can't... If, there could be inspiring women out there that may not be able to afford to come to such a resort exactly. that could actually give you an incredible speech yeah. and or a conference right. and inspire the other women. Uh -huh. exactly. you know, I think that's the way to go. I agree. Well, but you also have to remember it's only 10 people. It's not a whole lot of room. Yeah, we're not talking, you know, Richard Branson's island that only holds five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it is. But, but it is. I think, I think it's a neat thing, and you have some of these powerful women, so maybe they will think of other things to True. take these ladies to right. the next level. True. Right. Well, well, tell us what you think. Head over to Midday Kentucky's Facebook page. We're going to go to break in just a second. Um, tell us, go over there, tell us what you think. Also, head over to our website at WTVQ.com and click on the recipe tab. There's lots of recipes. Mm -hmm. We'll be right up, back after this blah, blah, blah break, everyone. <laughs> You're live out of Shakespeare & Co. here in Hamburg. See you in just a moment. <laughs>